The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Up next on The Believer's Walk of Faith. I got good news for you. God's got a destiny for you. And if you want to reach it, you won't do it God's way. You go do it God's way, brothers and sisters. I have tried to do it my way. That road gets wrong, it gets hard, it gets tough. You find you got bills, you can't pay them, you can't seem to settle down, your kids running crazy. I'm just telling you, you let God go, he'll let you go. You come back to God, he'll come back to you. Welcome to the Believer's Walk of Faith. This is Pastor Bill Winston, where we walk by faith and not by sight. Praise God. Well, today's teaching, we share with you one of the reasons why a lot of people don't reach their destiny. And the reason why is because of what we're teaching in this vital message, the anointing. You see, Christ means the anointed one in his anointing. And that anointing is on you. Once that anointing is on you and in you, let me tell you, nothing can stop you. It doesn't make any difference who you are. It doesn't make any difference what you've got, where you start. It doesn't make any difference what your background is. It doesn't make any difference. You are headed to your destiny. That's the power of the anointing. Now get your Bibles and pencils and papers ready. Let's go into this teaching now. Learn more about this anointing. Let's go into it. It's called Christ in You, Volume 2. You've got Christ where? In you. And what you've accomplished now is a joke compared to what you can do. Now, I'm just saying, think about it. When God made the church, he made the church so powerful. I mean, you're not supposed to be uh, fighting bills all the time. You're not supposed to be, come on, fighting uh, d- depression. You're not supposed to be. Now, I'm not coming down of you if that's a thing that is happening, but I'm here to tell you that God has a higher life that we're supposed to be living because of what's under the hood of our, come on, our covering here. Over in uh, Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2 in the Amplified, and I will make of you, he's talking to you now, a great nation, and I will do what? Bless you with what? Abundant increase of what? Favor, and make your name, come on, famous and distinguished, and you will be a blessing. So you are supposed to be famous by now for whatever you do. Well, what has been happening? What's been happening either is that the anointing has not been preached or the Antichrist has been getting in and stealing that anointing because of anger, because of racism, because of whatever, and causing that anointing not to work. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. So what is the result of not having that anointing to function? People have never reached their destiny, never reached the maximum of what they can do in this life. And also lives have never been touched. When you got that anointing on you, it draws people to you. It takes you to problems that you can lift burdens off of people. And also when that anointing is on you, there's not been, uh, when anointing is not there, it's not been that fulfillment. When people People die and leave this earth. You see them talking about, oh, I wish I would have. Oh, I, boy, I had a chance. I never taught. I never did this. I should have done that. All kinds of fulfillment is not there at the end of life. When that anointing is, is, is not working, you'll find that you're not even leaving an inheritance to your children's children. Folks, that should be enough in the bank that your children won't have to struggle. They can live better than you. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. And also, when that anointing is on you, it gives you a possibility lifestyle. In other words, others will see it on you. And when they see it on you, they'll be drawn to that anointing. They'll see the value in it. Say amen to that. Also, when that anointing is on you, opportunities will never pass 
by you. You'll see that opportunities will be drawn to you. And, and all the opportunities that should be drawn to you, you, you would be open to opportunities that you've never been open to before. Also, when that anointing is not working like it should, you don't command the respect of an unbeliever. Somehow you're sitting in the same doctor's office. I'm sitting in the same, I'm just saying, don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. I ask you to fasten your seatbelt because what you're going to do from now on is that anointing is going to kick in. You're going to take your foot and put it all the way down there. You're going to see what this thing will really do. Say amen to that. Well, look at Jesus. He's, he's constantly moving them into that anointing, see, because they're trying to live only by their flesh. And he said in Mark chapter 16, if you go over there with me, please. In Mark chapter 16, starting at verse 15. And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth on me is, and, and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be what? Damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt them. Now, this is not talking about go out and drink a fifth of liquor somewhere, and it won't hurt them. They shall lay hands on the who? Sick. And they shall recover. Um, this is not written to the preacher. It's written to the reacher. It's written to people who are in a church. The word church comes from the uh, Greek word ekklesia, which means called out ones. You didn't choose him. We said in John chapter 15 and verse 16, you didn't choose him for he chose you and ordained you that you will go out and bring forth fruit. You, with that, or that anointing on you, are never supposed to run from a problem. You're supposed to run to problems because you're supposed to be operating so high about people that don't have, come on now. Let, get your foot on the accelerator. Let, let, it's time to, it, come on, it's time to pump this thing. It's in you already. It's called potential. Potential is simply hidden abilities. God would never tell you to govern the earth if you could, didn't have the potential to do it. Isaiah chapter nine and verse six. And unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be what? No end. Upon the throne of David and upon this kingdom to order it, say order it. Order it. And to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. That's what he said. The government shall be upon his what? Shoulder. The number of government is 12. That's why he chose 12 disciples. And where will it be? Upon his shoulder. See, the government of God, the church, is the governing arm of the kingdom. Wherever you go, subdue systems. Watch this, change legislation. Oh yes, in the last days, one of the major targets of attack, demonic attack is gonna be the justice system. But you come in to change laws. Now wait a minute, don't say you can't do it because he never would have told you that you can do it. But he said, I'm giving to you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And what? Nothing. Nothing. All right, let's look at First John chapter 2 and verse 18. One more time, please. Little children, it is the last time. 
And as you've heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So the Antichrist comes to steal the what? The anointing. Stop that anointing because that's the thing that he's got to stop. Now, one of the things that can stop the anointing is that you not believing and trusting in God's word. All right. Now, I think in the last days, it's going to be all about the anointing. The devil is trying to stop the church because you are starting to rise and he does not like it. Amen. All right. Let's look at this and let's look at first Timothy chapter two and verse one. He says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for some men. Oh, thank you for correcting me. All men. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. Come on. And honesty. Keep going. For this is good. Say, this is good. And acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. Glory to God. I had to bring that out and come to the knowledge of the truth. All right, now God is sovereign. Isaiah 45, God is sovereign. What does sovereign mean? It means all powerful. He is above everything. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee and though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. I form the light and I create darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Leave that in place, please. Now, notice what he said. He said, I form the light and I create darkness. The Bible says over in 1 John that in him is no darkness at all. God doesn't create what doesn't come out of him. So what he's saying here, I uh, form the light and I allow darkness. Let's go because it's in the permissive in the Hebrew. I make peace and I create evil. Well, if God created evil, he couldn't get on you for lying and creating evil. No, it means he allows evil. And he said, I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, I want you to go to Isaiah Chapter 33, say God is sovereign. God is sovereign. <laughs> now this scripture is where we get in our constitution, the three branches of government. This is human government. For the Lord is our who? Judge. The Lord is our what else? Lawgiver. The Lord is our who? King. And what will he do? He will save us. All right, let's go to these three. He's a judge. That is the judicial branch of government, the Supreme Court. He is the lawgiver. That is Congress. That is where laws now are made. He is our king. That is the executive branch of government. And that is the president that is the last signature signing something into law. Got it? So this country was ordered under those three. Got it? Now, when that happens, now God tells us about who to pray for. And in 1 Timothy verse chapter 2 and verse 1 again, he tells you who to pray for. 
I exhort therefore that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Watch this, watch this. For kings and all that are in authority. Now, do we have a king in this country? No. What do we have? We have a president. Now, are we supposed to pray for our president? Why? Because God said so. Now, wait, 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 don't, don't get it twisted. He didn't ask for your opinion. And he doesn't want it. You said, well, wait a minute. I, I just don't feel I have to do that. Who are you? Second Corinthians chapter five and verse 20, please. Who are you? He says this, now that we are ambassadors for Christ, you are a government official sent from a kingdom and you are only authorized to do the will of your king. The will of your king says you will pray for all that are in authority. I told you to fasten your seatbelt. See, I don't have a choice. It makes no difference. He's not changing. Proverbs 21. Look what he says in Proverbs 21 and verse 1. The king's heart is in the hands, come on, you have, of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it, whithersoever he will. See, when they got in that position, their heart is now going to be controlled by God. Watch this, watch this who is going to respond to the intercession of the people of God. You don't pray, he don't do nothing. And you're going to have a rough life. I don't care who's in there because whoever gets in there, the devil is after him. A place of the seat of authority like the president that place is bombarded daily with demon spirits. Now, stop this complaining. Why? Because over in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, it says this, curse not the king. I'm going to leave that right there. telling you the way that the enemy is trying to stop the church is to get you first to hate each other and then get you hating on somebody who in fact if they're put there you got a petition with God who is the judge that he can turn a river whichever way he wants to turn it. Daniel and Daniel chapter 6. See, a lot of preachers don't have the courage to preach this. I'm not saying I'm somebody special, but when you come in here, you're going to get the, you're going to get it straight with no chaser. You, you're going to get the gospel with no flares on it. You, you're going to get it just like it is in the book. And I'm telling you right now, that you got a choice to make after I lay this on you. You can either flow with God or you can decide to go with some group that you've been hearing and television that you've been watching. I got good news for you. God's got a destiny for you. And if you want to reach it, you won't do it God's way. You're going to do it God's way, brother. 
brothers and sisters, I have tried to do it my way. That road gets wrong, it gets hard, it gets tough. You find you got bills, you can't pay them, you can't seem to settle down, your kids running crazy. I'm just telling you, you let God go, he'll let you go. You come back to God, he'll come back to you. He doesn't care what you think. Well, I ain't coming back in here. Yes, you are. You know why you're coming back? Because you love the truth. You might get mad at it right now, but you were like I was when I went to that church on the north side and I saw this man of God preaching and you know, he was a white man and I'd never been to a white church with a white man preaching. I was brought up, you know, in the black Baptist church and I'd never been. And I said, I don't know this man trying to trick these people. So each time I'd move closer to the front, I'd move closer to the front to see, I said, I'm gonna see the, the, his eyes, the whites of his eyes. I got so close to the front. He said, all right, somebody need to be saved. If you need to be saved, get in this line. If you need to be healed, get in this line. If you need the Holy Ghost, get in this line. I said, oh, Lord, what good hope now do I need to get in? And so I got in the Holy Ghost line. The man of God laid hands on me. Pow! The power of God hit me. I fell out under the power of God. I got up, and it felt like somebody was having a party in my stomach. I said, man, I said, I got some." I went home and told my friend, Hey, man, I got the Holy Ghost. They said this, you got a ghost. I said, no, I got the Holy Ghost, man. It changed my life from that day to this one because I got the power of God and it removed the burdens and it destroyed the yokes. You better hear what I'm telling you. There's some people in here, you've been baptized in water, but you have never had the Holy Ghost. And when you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're missing part of the power because it's going to remove things that have been choking your mind and keeping you in darkness. Now give God some praise off of this. I am unapologetic about the gospel because it is the power of God to salvation to everybody that will believe it. Christ, his death and resurrection did more than simply guarantee your entrance into heaven. There's so much more here on earth you have access to because of the anointing deposited within you. Christ and his anointing breaks yokes, lifts burdens, and clears the way for you to win in life. It's time to discover how to access and release this power source. The anointing is the key that brings to pass the promises of God right now. Call us now at 800-711-9327 or go online to billwinston.org to get your copy of Christ in You, Volume 2. In this four-part series, Dr. Winston masterfully breaks down the anointing within you as only he can. Dr. Winston uses the scriptures to explain what the anointing is and exactly how this God-given power works. Consider this four-part series a spiritual boot camp. You'll emerge from this time in the Word truly understanding the anointing and how to activate it for your benefit. These lessons are available on DVD, MP4, CD, or MP3. Maybe you want to up size your understanding of the true power you have as God's child, then the Power Within You bundle is just for you. Not only will you receive the four-part Christ in You Volume 2 series, you will also get a copy of Dr. Winston's mini book, The Missing Link of Meditation. The art of biblical meditation is the process that shifts your thinking and creates permanent change in your life. If you have not seen what the Bible promises come to pass, this book provides the missing link to make your every dream be become a reality. You have all you need to succeed locked up inside of you. Don't wait one more day to unleash the power within. Hello, Bill Winston here. I would like to wish you and your family a very happy Thanksgiving. In Isaiah chapter 12 and verses 4 and 5, it says this, And you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name and make known His deeds among the people. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously, and let this be made known throughout all the earth. 
As we go through this holiday season, it's important for us to remember to take time to give thanks to God. Now, you might be gathering with the family or you might be by yourself, but wherever you are, it's good for us to thank God. You see, when we want to open the door even for more things that God is wanting to do for us, He wants us to thank Him for what He's done. Let's just take a moment right now. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we don't come asking for anything. We don't come uh, requesting something. We, we just come to say thank you. Lord, we don't want to be like those that when you heal them, they just went off and only one returned. We want to be like that one that returned and said thank you. And Lord, we want to thank you, even for things that, that you've done, but things that you're doing now and things that you're going to do. Thank you, Lord. And we give you the praise and thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, it might not seem like much, but it's a lot to God just for his children to come back and say thank you. We thank our partners and we thank all of those who have been uh, our viewers, those who have supported our uh, broadcast, whether it be monetary or whether it be uh, supporting us in, in prayer. We thank you so much. Your gifts and your support have meant so much to us. Together, we're taking the gospel to the nations and transforming millions of lives. Praise God. And we thank you so much for it. So for all of us here at Bill Winston Ministries, we wish you and your family a very happy Thanksgiving. God bless you. Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. Contact us by phone at 1-877-543-9443 or submit your prayer request online at billwinston.org forward slash prayer. Follow us on Periscope and Facebook to join us for our regular live prayer sessions. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. Together, we are transforming lives throughout the world. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. We love you and look forward to praying and partnering with you. My name is Tracy Abrams and I am JBS. I am the administrator and owner of Harvest in Home Care. I became a single parent because I had gotten a divorce and I was really, really struggling. Um, didn't, didn't have any money, didn't know how I was gonna pay my bills, so I knew I needed a way out. I attended JBS and that's when God spoke to me clearly that you need to open up your own company. Just the overall environment, being in a place where you can hear God. That's when he spoke to me and said, you should open up your own home care agency. That was the most impactful moment for me. The program really changed my life drastically. Attending JBS helped me to build my core team. We currently have 50 caregivers that are employed by Harvest and Home Care. I encourage anyone that has a business idea to attend the Joseph School of Business. The mission of Bill Winston Ministries is to preach the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. Thank you, Bill Winston Ministry partners and viewers for your continuous support of the Believer's Walk of Faith broadcast. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers.